Hey everybody, this is Stu Smith and Jeff Nichols with another Tactical Fitness Report. And today it is um, strange Coronavirus time. edition. Yeah, yeah this is the, the quarantine edition yeah. um, of the Tactical Fitness Report. So it's crazy time right now. Um, a lot of people have um, lost their places to train. Um, I mean, this is on the minor scale of what's happening, obviously. Um, we're from the fitness world, so we're going to talk about fitness. Yeah. Don't yeah if we were to... comedians, we'd be making jokes about it. Yeah. So. Or, you know, if we were medical professionals, we'd give you your COVID-19 advice. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're yeah. going to say, what do you do in this situation where your gym is closed, your pool is closed? Um, you don't have a whole lot of equipment at your house and you're in the middle of one of our programs that requires a lot of gear, right? Yep. Or pool or facilities, things like that, that you just don't have access to. So what, what do you do now? Right. Yeah. And, and we, we guess there's, there's a couple of different levels of this. So you're either, um, just in a place where the gyms and the restaurants are closed, no school. So all that facility is is gone um or you're at another level of city where you're actually sheltering in place in your home and you can't leave mm -hmm. um i don't know what that looks like i don't know if you have a yard can you get out in your yard or if you're in the city you don't have a yard anyway you know so there's it, it could be so many different variables to what you can actually do and i don't really know that but I guess, I guess the big question is you're on a program and you don't have access to do your program. What do you do? Yeah. So, so where yeah, one of the, I think one of the biggest difficult things is to understand this is that we, we have no end state. So we don't know how long this is going to last. That's, that's the thing. It's like, okay, because a couple again, if, if you're one of those people that has a home gym, doesn't have a home gym, quarantine to your house, quarantine to your neighborhood, whatever level of quarantine that you are adhering to, right? And then the length of time is going to determine kind of what what's what. But I also look at it and go, you're probably one of three or four people too if you are training. You're probably way overtrained, <laughs> moderately overtrained, right on top, or undertrained. So the undertrained really isn't even in this discussion as far as I'm concerned, because undertrained will never succeed. So let's just push them aside as far as I'm yeah. concerned. Or get um, started. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> but that's the other side Very too. Very basic like that, calisthenics. That, yeah, really. To start. So you got time. Let's do it. Exactly. No so, excuses now. Right. There's zero to get, yeah. get moving. And so I, I think that given what this is, you know, let's, let's, if you, if you look at the big picture of it, let's, let's treat it like it's on purpose. That's the way I say it. It's like, okay, you've just purposely taken two weeks off from your current training regimen to do other things or to improve upon other things or skill acquisition. Grand, like you can do a lot of form running on a track, right? You can do some on a track. Like, so that's what I'm saying. This is the, this is the conversation that Stu and I want to kind of, we'll, we'll kind of bracket a little bit better here, but yeah. So from your standpoint, Stu, let's say, someone says to you, let's just kind of create a student, I guess, say, Hey, I'm, yep. I'm at week six of X program. I have no pool, no, tr no, no weight room. Now, now what do I do? And this person has been showing improvements over the months. They, they have been using resistance training, um, to bent to their benefit. So now you've got a person that's been using resistance training, you know, a plethora of things. So the worry is, okay, oh my God, my, my gains are going to lose them. So I, I, for me, Stu, like, what is your advice to that individual? Well, you know, you made a really good point. You, you kind of framed it, which I didn't really think about. But if you're overtraining right now, not a bad time to deload. Like if you're starting to feel the aches and pains of, of heavy lifts or some of the aches and pains of a running progression, right? And you're getting shins, you know, you just started a running program five weeks ago and now your shins are kind of bothering you. You know what? take a vacation right yeah. take a vacation from that kind of impact but you can always replace it with something else you know if mm -hmm. you can if you can get a bike or a stationary bike um those are great options for you to to have in your house um jeff and i actually did back a year year and a half ago maybe i think we built our own home gym podcast we did yeah and, and it's up on 
uh, the YouTube channel. Um, I'll, I'll put a link into the, uh, the, the description below and I'll send it to you, Jeff, and you can share it as well. Yep, Cause deal. I think that one has some really good advice on the things that you have in your gym and what I have in my home gym. And it can be as, as elaborate as, squat racks and all the cool stuff Jeff has at, at his place, or it could be as basic as mine with a pull-up bar and a TRX yeah. and, a, and a barbell and some kettlebells. I mean, you're, you're tar like, I think honestly, this is a perfect example folks where I really encourage you, especially if you have a family, especially if you're in the tactical environment, right? Where sometimes it's just nice to train at home. It's just a nice day. So me personally, if right now I would go, okay, I'm going to rethink this home, home gym investment, right? I'm going to get two horse stall mats, a tractor supply. I'm going to get a yep. TRX. I'm going to get a set of bands. Um, and then from there, or you, you can get yoga blocks, parallettes. And then, then even we're still dealing with minimal equipment, like a, a, a nice selector set up to 50 pounds with dumbbells, right? <laughs> it's plenty, plenty. Right? It's yeah. plenty to, still maintain that level of stimulus that you want. Some of you may need, but it's also that minimal equipment forces you to downregulate some of that stimulus that you probably also need for you over trainers. Yeah. And it's also, it's a really good time to focus. Like in Stu and I tell us all the time, if you prep correctly, you're, you won't have to worry about the PST. This might be a really good opportunity to begin practicing your setup for the PST, your rhythm for the PST, like what's my cadence, like start figuring out what that is. Yeah. Right? Using dynamic, your dy my dynamic pushup workout, right? It's a perfect time. So it, I, point of all this, what Stu and I are trying to tell you is like, we're not trying to be glass half full. We're saying the glass is completely full depending on your perspective. So got it, the gym's not open, got it, right? But there's plenty that can be done. Okay. And, and Stu and I both have the programs that will show you that Stu has far more calisthenic stuff than I do. And that's what, it, basically that's what I'm saying is like, we need to stimulate the muscle right now because that stimulation is all you need. Especially if, if you're following my programs or Stu's, you've got a quality program. So this will not set you back. If this, if this right. goes on for another two, three weeks, it's not going to set you back. No, no. Especially if there's a place to run, you know, and, and if you're not stuck in your house, but you know, you can always go run. You can always find a pull-up bar or a monkey bar somewhere, you yeah. know, if, or, you know, build your own. It's not that hard. You get yeah. a couple of six by sixes and a pole and you can build yourself a pull-up bar and you know where you go, go to YouTube and say, how do I build a pull-up bar? And sure enough, there's somebody on there that's going to show you how to do it yep. step by step. It's incredible. Um, yeah. You know, that's just, and, and that's without, if you live in an apartment and you're not supposed to put holes in it, it's yep. really, really simple. Just stand in a door frame. Yep. All you have to do is get two by sixes that fill up that the side of the door frame and a pole that runs across. Yep. The weight itself will wedge itself in if you if you cut it right. But yeah. Yeah, there's also things you can buy too that aren't that expensive. There's pull up bars that um there's this one called the uh the stud bar mm -hmm. that uh it goes to the studs of your house, perfectly aligned for the studs of your house. And you can put a lot of weight on that. That, yep. that That's not that expensive. Uh, then there's the door jam pull-up bars that are okay. Yep. You know, if you're a taller person, I, I, they're not that fun, but they're, they're something. Yep. Um, usually what I do is I, I try, if I'm trying to do a pull-ups is I will start running and I know there's a playground somewhere along the journey of my run. And I swing by that playground. Now, is it closed? I don't know. You know, if, you know, there, there's a lot of issues that are going on right now. Hopefully, you know, you do it at six in the morning, it's dark, no one knows you're doing pull-ups and you're there by yourself anyway, you know, but yeah. you know, I guess it depends on where you live. I mean, there's some States that have minimal cases, so I doubt they've actually done shelter in place type laws. I mean, here in Maryland, they've closed all the restaurants. Um, schools are shut down. Gyms are shut down. Uh, you can get takeout, so the restaurants aren't actually closed. But you can get takeout and carry. Yeah, it DoorDash and all those are, yeah. are pumping. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, you know, we're just working out outside. You know, and you can work out outside in decent sized groups. That's what we just did. We, yeah. we usually are inside. We just moved everything outside. The only thing we're not doing right now is swimming because all the pools are closed. So yeah, we're just adding more cardio. 
you know, and we're adding yeah. more movements that swimming involves. So we're doing a lot of planking. We're doing a lot of little flutter kicks on your back, flutter kicks on your belly, you know, just other movements that, you know, work the same muscles of, of swimming, a lot of core work activity, you know, in there. So, you know, especially with the plank and trying to, you know, work your shoulder mobility in there too. Yeah. And, you know, so what a great time. What a great time folks to get YouTube, which you, if you have a computer, type in yoga, yeah. go through yoga, go through, go through like every three days, do, do a 60 minute yoga session on YouTube. You know like, what? That's a great idea. Again, use this opportunity because he full i'm fully guilty of it too folks when i'm in my routine and following my program i'm only really kind of a lot of times i'm doing 90 percent of what i want to do the 10 percent is taking a second seat or some of us you know 20 percent sometimes right guilty of that as well sure do the things right now that you wouldn't normally do you know okay. work on mobility things that's why i say skill acquisition work on your squat Work on your squat movement pattern. Work on your push-up movement pattern. Work on your dips. Work on your form running. Like, treat it like it's a PST. Start grouping those numbers or, together and go, okay, I want to get to 100 push-ups. What's the fastest way to do that, right? Break them into small groups. Keep your velocity up, right? Challenge yourself with these things. Like, sit down and watch a movie, and every time that someone says the lead character's name, do 20 push-ups or something, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just keep be, moving. Be creative, you know, and I, I think that's the thing too is, you know, look at this as a challenge. Look at this as a challenge to remain creative because you all are trying to work towards something you desperately want. And now we're going, oh my God, I don't have the, the facilities necessary for me to achieve that goal that I've been chewing on for a year. Rest assured, folks, be creative, keep working out. If you have mental equipment, use it. Again, ask your friends, ask, ask around who, Hey, who's got this? Who's got that? Um, all you really need is a couple pieces of wood and a rope, right? At that, at that point, now you've got a TRX. If you got rope, you got a TRX. Yeah. That's right. True. If you got, if you got four by six blocks, right. You've got, you got parallettes, yeah. right? That's you've got what well, you've got, right? Hell you could get a shoe box and full full of old baseball cards. And now you've got parallettes. You know, you know what? Long before there was a TRX, you know what I used to use? A, a swing set so if you think about exactly. what a swing is it's <laughs> pendulum training right and so you could do your rollouts you can put your feet in the swing and do atomic push-ups you can grab onto it and do squats and high rows i mean yeah. it, it go is, to home depot and buy one that has like the bar and then the two handles underneath it that's all move yeah. perfect there you go yeah mount that sucker mount that sucker anywhere <laughs> yeah totally great idea so i, I think that that's like let this sort of, you know, I hate to use the word crisis because it's more of a, a panic than it is a crisis in my opinion, but use this time to be creative, work on the things that you know you need to work on, work, stretch, mobility, all that stuff. And, and I think that that right there, but before you know it, folks, this is going to be kind of one of those things that's behind us and things will be back to normal and you'll, you'll get that. Cause here's what you're going to find out. You guys will get back into your gym space and go, Oh, some of you are going to go, holy crap, I got stronger. You were overtraining. Yeah. <laughs> Some of you is going to go, I didn't, oh man, I got a little, like, not, I didn't lose a thing. Those of you who are, those, you were moderately overtrained. Right. For those of you who go, man, I didn't miss a beat. You were training exactly where you were supposed to be. And for those of you who weren't training anyway, this conversation isn't for you. Right. <laughs> so, you know, it's, I, I think that the human body, the human body knows what's going on. The brain knows what's going on. The, the, all the work you guys put in, you don't lose it. You don't lose it, folks. So don't don't stress out too much. I think for most people, they're like, "How am I going to occupy my time?" Because those those two hours spent each day training, they're like, it fatigues the body and the mind appropriately so they can sleep, and it, it it's social for them. Sure, that's like a big thing that people are like. Think about the people that aren't training for selection. Think about the people that live and die fitness, breathe it every day, and and you're like, you're going to see a real fit of depression from some of these people. Yeah, you know what I think problem. it is that the main problem is is we are all creatures of habit. And what has happened is our habits are just thrown upside down right now and we're having to adjust. Yep. Right. So there's some adjustment period. And I guarantee you, in the course of a week, you're gonna be on a new habitual training cycle. If, if let's say this lasts a month. Yeah. You know, the, the stinging part of it will be the first week 
after that, the next three weeks, we'll just move right along and, uh, you know, you'll, you'll create a system, but you got to get creative. You got to get creative. I mean, I, I've had, I have cinder blocks in my carport as part of my, you know, so, some of the movements that we're doing with, you know, cinder blocks as, you know, I have yep. a bunch of neighborhood kids coming over and we're working out every day at three o'clock. You know, yep. so you can plenty heavy for fun. shoulder work. Center make this are. fun. You, you can make yeah. this a lot of fun and um, people can learn from it. You know, you can teach people just get creative with what you have, even if it's just a little bit of stuff. I mean, yeah, I don't care if you get a backpack, fill it with sand and you walk know, you got a handle on it and walk around with that. You know, that's, you know, you can do that. You know, go, go to Home Depot, get a four dollar bag of play sand, and you make your own sandbag. Yeah, you know, for about yeah. five bucks. Exactly. Like I, I think that here, my challenge to you all is this: is with that, along that creativity, and what Stu is saying. I think that if many of you just kind of go, you know what, this is what I've got. What I've got, I'm going to be creative and go after it. What you're going to do is you're going to find some things in the midst of this creativity that you will forever use in preparation for training because you're like, Oh my God, like I've never used, you know, a TRX where I'm in this, you know, prone overhead extension sort of like, man, I love that for my triceps and my oh, last stability. So like, yeah. so you're like, Oh, I've never tried that. I'm telling you right now, folks, if you own a TRX, right. Your idea of what you're going to do of why the gyms aren't open have just pretty much eliminated themselves. I'm telling you oh, like absolutely between a TRX, a set of bands and like a set of dumbbells, like select or dumbbells or whatever. It's like yep. no issues. That's all you need. All. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. You know what? I'm, I want to say this because there are some rules to this uh, process too. Cause I know there's going to be somebody says, Hey, you know, I need to get better at pull-ups, push-ups and sit-ups for the PST. Can I do those every day? You know what? At this kind of volume, you, you don't want to do those every day. You need to treat that like you're lifting. You know, you're not going to do bench press every day. You're not going to do squats every day, you know, with weight um, or without weight for, for, for my recommendation, you know, you should give your body some time off, you know, in between that. Um, yep. You know, especially if you're going high volume. Yep. Right. If you're going high volume, pull ups, push ups, sit ups, dips, you know, other, you know, flutter kicks, squats, lunges, you know, just do those every other day. I typically do an upper body day and I do a lower body day. And yep. I just go through the week, you know, on that cycle, you know, and then follow it up with some form of cardio afterwards. So there are the rules still apply. You know, there's nothing that changes about the rules of physiology and your ability to recover, you know. Yep. calisthenics or weights you don't have weights you do a lot of calisthenics you still need to recover before you do that same muscle group again yeah yeah just you know systematically break things up like Stu's mentioning it. It, it just don't repeat the same thing in consecutive days with the same intensity or volume right or not at all so it's like right Stu's saying upper body lower body split that works great right maybe you know after doing that for a couple of days you go upper body push Yep. Because then by that point here in four or five days, you got to start figuring out what you can and want to do. Yep. So like, okay, upper body push, I'm doing more push ups um, and more tricep work. That's your upper body push. The next day is, uh, you know, upper body pull. Yep. Right. You're doing a lot more pull ups, more tricep work. Right. And then you maybe you thrash your legs on day three and then it's like, uh, it could yep. be, that's the thing is anything, anything, anything is valuable. Right. And if you can do walking lunges, and rear rear elevated split squats and if you have a trx right you're you're doing good like walking lunges with dumbbells walking lunges with sandbags and if you're fortunate enough at barbell awesome but right weight is weight the body doesn't care if it's 45 pounds of sand or a yeah. 45 pound bar that's true as long as the position in which you're supporting that device that object is still fairly efficient sure. right you can still get those benefits you know i that's why i was like I tell people to like, a, there's a bunch of companies now, but one of my favorite things to do or buy, I recommend is instead of buying medicine balls that already have the weight in them because freight is so expensive. Like I said, you make your own medicine ball, use an old basketball, cut a small hole in it, fill it full of sand. If you live on the beach or go to home Depot, right? Yep. Da duct tape it up. Now you have a medicine ball, right? That's a great, or you can go with, uh, uh, there's a few companies, that basically sell the outer shell of a sandbag. It's a round yep. ball. 
Um, God, I forget the name of that the company. They're out of Denver. I have a brute strength. There we go. Yeah, brute, brute force. Brute, brute strength or brute force sandbags. Yep. yep. Um, they come in, you know, long sandbags, round sandbags, and all you're doing is buying the flat, the fabric. Then you, so fill you buy it that. It's like sand. you know, fifty yeah. bucks. It comes in the mail, in a little package. But if you buy a hundred pound medicine ball, which I've done, yeah. the freight on my hundred pound medicine ball was almost three hundred dollars. Yeah, it's nuts. And I was like, the medicine ball was only 40 bucks, <laughs> right? So I was like, oh, okay, there's got to be a better way and, to do and this. And the mailman hates you. Oh, um, serious. <laughs> I, yeah, like it was a hundred pound, I have a hundred pound medicine ball in my garage. That's huge. I, I was just like, nope, I don't expect anyone to carry that. <laughs> yeah, no one would know either. Like, it says like, it has like a little heavy sticker on it. Like, oh, this is 20 pounds. Like, nope, it's a hundred. Mm. So yeah, like be creative folks. And because- everything we're talking about this was my life in eighth and ninth grade i was yeah. too embarrassed to go to a gym so what did i do i created my own gym space with my dad's cinder blocks a rope nice. i made my own sandbag sandbag out of an old basketball from pizza hut right i used I like christmas it. i used christmas duct tape because it was like what else am i going to use in august kind of thing and that's what i did i climbed i climbed ropes um I set up hurdles in my yard. I'd run and jump hurdles and saw horses oh, and awesome. basically create a little steeplechase with like a little workout system in it. Sweet. And I was 14, 13, 14 years old. So it, I would do that now, just like what Stu is saying out in his driveway. He's got, he's got her out in the front yard. He's like, yeah, absolutely, man. This is an excuse, folks, to get some people together who are not supposed to. It's, <laughs> late, it, it, it's yeah. an excuse Keep to have fun. Keep them outdoors. Keep them outside. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's an excuse for you to get together with your neighbors, neighbor kids, and get a workout in. Absolutely. Yeah, be fun. Yeah, I think so, when I was that age, I had a concrete set of weights with a hollow bar and a very flimsy bench press. And yep. uh, got ordered it from Sears catalog. Yeah, got it. I made my own bench press. Yeah. Oh, wow. Out of wood. It still is in my dad's garage. Jeez. But I did. I bought the – my parents that year got me – a set of the weeder, the stainless steel weeder ones that have the small holes you get a screw yep. on. Yep. They're great okay. weights, yep. but they're a pain in the butt to move around because they're just so tight and nice. Um, but yeah, that it, hindsight being 2020, everyone wishes they had added TRX probably by this point. So now do it, man. Pull TRX the trigger, is, is fitness in a bag, man. It really is. Yep. It, it is your home gym yep. mul mul force multiplier. Yeah, and so even when, like when you travel, it's like that that sandbag I was talking about. That's the container in that brute force. That's where my bands go in it, my TRX goes in it, my yoga blocks will go in it. Zip it up. It, it's a carry on basically. Now That's I've got nice. a travel bag. You can put uh, lacrosse balls in it. You can put um, the stick in it. Right. It's like, and it all fits in a little round sandbag like nice. this medicine ball. So now you. Yeah. You just set that aside, like you, like probably probably many of you, especially on the East Coast, have like, like your hurricane blowout kit, right? It's like, hey, <laughs> fake virus outbreak. I'm gonna pull my fake virus gym out, <laughs> bag out of the out of the out of the um, closet. So yeah, I just make, you know, I make jokes about it, but at the same time, it's like, what can we do? This is what we've got, so we're gonna make the best. My, of it. my thing is, I don't want to get sick. You know, I, I don't want to get sick. I don't want to have something in my lungs for an extra month or month and a half yeah. and uh, just digress. So I'm just staying away from people. Yeah, you know? that's a good, I know I'm, I'm good at that. I've been doing that for years. Yeah, it's like, yeah. So it's like, it's like no, no different. Business as usual, pretty much for me. So, yeah, I mean, I'm way, I get out way more than I once did. But yeah, right. it, it, hindsight being 2020 folks, invest. It's not going to cost a ton of money. I would, yeah. I would say do that. I would say this, if you've been paying for a gym membership, do the math on what that costs for a year and then just say, you know what? I think I'm done with my gym membership and I'm going to invest the money I was going to spend on a gym membership on a home gym. And within a few months, you'll be able to uh, accumulate some good gear. Yep. So and I think that you get, you accumulate that gear. You'll probably find that you're, you actually use it more than you thought you would. Yeah, that's true. So, all right, Jeff. Well, thank you. And everybody, stay safe. You stay betcha. well. And um, this too will pass. <laughs> we'll, right. we'll do this again, Stu. Be well. Right. We'll see you.